Hey guys, Bondo here. So this is a 32 by 48 pole barn that we poured 15 months ago. I just got back from the place. This is the, the day we poured it, but I just visited um, the guy. He does excavation work for us, and he was showing me this floor. Of course, he's got it all full of uh, his equipment and stuff, but there's not one crack in this floor, and he did not want any saw cuts in this floor when we poured it. He uh, didn't want the grease and stuff to get in the cuts, and he's driving heavy equipment and stuff in here, and he said he would rather have a hairline crack than, than uh, have a, um, a saw cut. So we did not cut it, and this is a six-inch thick slab. He prepared the slab himself. He does have some real good equipment, and he did roll the subgrade really good with a big vibratory roller, and uh, we poured this thing out, and like I said, 15 months later, there's not one crack in it. So uh, watch the video, and you'll see how we did it. And uh, I think we're on to something here, the way we poured this floor, for it not to have cracked in that time frame. Hey guys, Bondo here. We got a 32 by 48 barn that we're pouring out today. And uh, it's got kind of a unique detail to it, I'll show you here. Um, the guy wants a curb around the outside of this barn. So we've done this one time before. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but basically we just put a two by 10 around here at your five and a half inches above the floor where you want your floor height. And we screw this board in here and then we pour our concrete and we pour the curb at the same time. So we'll fill this wall with concrete and it kind of runs out the bottom and that's part of your floor so um he had this done in his old barn years ago and i guess he really liked it he says it keeps the critters out the mice and stuff from coming up through there and when he washes floors and stuff with the pressure washer he's not worried about uh the edges you know he's got this concrete in there but uh it's definitely a challenge to do this because a lot of times when you pull this board, you're gonna have a little bit of a gap where the edge of the board is. And in a perfect world, I would cut these boards at a 45 degree angle, like you were doing stairs. But this is my form lumber, so I don't wanna ruin all this lumber. So we are going to basically fill it up. And then when it comes time where we can just, uh, just walk on the floor, barely, we're going to pull the board and try to make the edge as nice as we can. Um, we got a concrete vibrator here, a little Makita battery powered one. So we will zap these curbs as we pour them. We're not too worried about the face of it. I mean, unless it's really bad honeycombed, we might rub the faces a little bit, but we're more worried about the edge where the curb meets the floor, trying to get that to look nice. He's got just a little tiny drain in here. That's all he wanted because uh, he doesn't want the creeper to, uh, mess around when he's rolling underneath his trucks. He has big trucks, he's an excavator, so he don't wanna deal with a big long drain. So we just put a short little drain in. He actually put that in himself and uh, he graded everything. Um, it's a little deep. To me, it's uh, looking like it's gonna take about three, three more yards, three to four more yards than we planned because it's a good six inches in most places. So we're running 4,000 pound concrete, guys. It's got a light air mixture to it, which is good for freeze thaw cycles because this barn's probably not gonna be heated at all. So, and that's what we're doing. Stay with us and I'll uh, get some video footage of the pour and probably some of the finishing too for you. You can just about smell it as it comes in. Here come the mud, guys, here it comes. Circle T rolling in so we were going to use a conveyor the first truck and we couldn't get it he's running a little behind so we're going to start with the front loader which is going to kind of suck but uh, it'll save us a good probably 40 minutes so we'll do the we'll do the second truck with the with the conveyor oh it's michael mike's coming in on a job hey mike what's up buddy Rolling in, circle T, 315-963-2231, Central New York area, 
Oswego County, Onondaga County, parts of Jefferson County. That's where you want to get your concrete, guys. Best in the area right now. There's their logo. Like I said, we're going to roll out this. Uh, there's 11 yards on this truck. We're going to pour this first. It's calling for 32 yards, so. Like a five and a half, Mike. It's going to be a pain with this curb, but we'll get her. Hey guys, so this is a job that we poured out last year towards the end of the summer, early fall. And uh, we went back there this spring to do a job for a, for the same customer. And he built a house. And that was the um, monopore stem wall that we built. Um, had the um, We poured the footer and the wall at the same time. I'll link that video right here for you. So you can watch that if you haven't seen it. But anyways, back to this one. When we were there working on the monopore job, we looked at this floor and there wasn't one crack in it. And this customer did not want any relief cuts or saw cuts because he just didn't want grease and stuff getting into him. He said he'd rather have a hairline crack. So um, with that being said, I've never seen a barn this big that wasn't cut that didn't crack. But um, I'm kind of thinking it was this curb detail that made it so much stronger because we pour floors like this all the time with the wire mesh and we just pull the wire mesh up into the floor and we always saw cut them because they definitely want to crack i mean something so big always wants to crack and we just put our cuts our relief cuts in after with a soft cut saw and we try to control the cracking but a lot of times they'll uh they'll even crack where you don't saw them um, they don't go anywhere. They just, you'll see a little hairline crack. But um, he, he said he'd rather have that hairline crack than those saw cuts. So he, and he was adamant about it. And he didn't want a super smooth finish on it because this is like a place where he's going to work on his, uh, his equipment. And uh, I guess he is going to heat it. I said he wasn't going to heat it, but he did have it spray foamed. So uh, it's not getting a lot of freeze thaw cycles like I thought it might. But, um, I'll try to get down there. I don't have the video footage right now, but I'm going to try to get over there. And this is a year later, uh, over a year later. I'm going to try to get over there because I know the guy real well and see if I can get a little video footage of this floor and uh, show you how there's no cracks in it because it just blows my mind. But um, you can see how we're doing it. We got a, It's a pain. You got to fill up that curb, basically shovel the material into there. And then we're wheelbarrowing the whole thing. That's why we got quite a few guys. We're using the dual-wheeled Brentwoods. But um, the conveyor truck's coming in, and we're going to use that for a bunch of it. But this first truck was a front loader. Um, they couldn't get the conveyor to us as quick. So and we poured this in the afternoon, so we had to get it started. But stay with me, and I'll show you more details of this pour. Okay, guys, we got uh, their new conveyor truck in here. He wasn't too far behind the first truck, so we're just going to use that to get it in quicker. And uh, that first truck is going to dump on to Sean with the conveyor, and we'll get him offloaded. We got our back of our curb done right there. That's done to about here on both sides, so that's all filled. We got a wet screed in um, along the edge, so that we're, we're where we want to be there. And we got our power, we stuck our power trolley here so that when we go to finish this, we can kind of scoot along the wall and uh, grab the power trowel. This will go a lot quicker with this conveyor, so we'll get this going. Get this first truck offloaded. All right, guys, you can see uh, Mike's coming in, he's just gonna dump his concrete onto Sean's conveyor will make this go quite a bit quicker for us. This curved detail is kind of a pain though. Yeah, it's about 100 in this building right now. Mm -hmm.
Okay, guys, so I don't know if I mentioned it, but this concrete here is 4,000 pound concrete. And uh, we order it from the plant that way. Some people ask, how do you know it's 4,000 pound concrete without slump testing it and stuff? Well, basically, it's a mixed design. They call it 4,000 pound concrete. It's got a certain amount of Portland in it. And they test it at the plant at a certain slump. So if you don't pour it super wet, you're going to be right there um at the the rating that they give it because it has to pass their testing so um you can see this conveyor saving us a bunch of time um i'm going to slow this down or put it back to normal speed so you can see us pulling the wire because a lot of guys say we don't pull the wire well here's roy with a potato rake in his hand and i'm reaching down pulling up wire as i'm pouring and that's how we do it we don't tear the wire up a lot of times because you can't walk on it safely and you, can, uh, you can't wheelbarrow on it at all. So that's how we do it, speed it back up for you. But um, just wanted to tell you the kind of concrete that we use. It's 4,000 PSI with a low air mix to it. And this is how we're pouring it out. Stay with us. Okay guys, I'll try to walk you through some of the things that we're doing here. Um, we emptied out the first truck, which was 10 yards, and now it's just Sean dumping right out of his truck. That's Sean in the red circle t-shirt standing there to the right. He has a remote control on his hand, and he can control that conveyor right from inside the building. And uh, he can turn the concrete on and off. He can move it side to side, and he can telescope it in and out. So. This uh, truck here saves us a ton of time. You can see it, it all works out with that tremmy. I'm just going, the tremmy being the hose part. And we poured most of this out um, at a slump of about five and a half to six. You can see we're not pouring really wet concrete like some guys do. You see on YouTube, they pour uh, really wet concrete. Some of the guys use a plasticizer, which is a, um, it's a chemical that makes the concrete um, more workable, makes it look looser. Um, there's no plasticizer in this concrete. This is just a uh, regular 4,000 PSI, like I said, and we're pouring at, like I said, about a five and a half slump, um, six at the top. So it's, uh, it's good stuff. It's gonna, you know, maybe that's why this floor didn't crack. We, we didn't use wet concrete. Um, whenever you add water to concrete, it will weaken the concrete. So if you can fight through it and pour it a little stiffer, it's definitely harder work to pour it stiffer. Um, it doesn't self-level itself. You know, when it's really loose, you can screed it a lot easier, and it's just a lot less work. But um, I don't like pouring concrete like that. Um, I like to pour it like this. Um, that, Plasticizer works. You can uh, pour a wetter slump with the plasticizer, which it's not adding water to it. It's adding that chemical to make it more workable. But um, anytime we add chemicals, I think um, I just don't like using chemicals. They're not as uh, consistent. You don't know what to expect. The concrete can act funny on you, dry funny, dry too fast, dry too slow. Um, so, and it's hard to get the, the um, plant to get the right amount of plasticizer in it around our area. They don't do it a lot. So, anyways, this is how we do it, guys. Um, we have a laser level, and we set wet pads, like little spots on the floor with the laser level, and that's our grade. And then we take that um, screed stick, and we pull it off there, and uh, we get ourselves a wet screed. So a wet screed is basically just concrete at grade. Um, that's that's what I mean by wet screed. So we're just taking our laser and putting our mark on, on the pad, using our screed stick to give a nice pad level. And that's where we want the surface to be. And then we use that to pull off. You can see the boys here raking behind the screed stick and they're pulling it down to grade. Right here they're putting a wet pad in. As you can see, that's a wet pad right there, what they just did. So they'll use that 
to set their grade. The, along the edge is all set, and then the wet pad. See how they do it? And then you got your, we call them puddlers, the guys behind that are raking the concrete down, trying to get it close to level so you don't have to pull as much concrete. So another thing I want to say, guys, is we don't build these barns. These, uh, these are called pole barns in our area. And uh, we don't build them. We just pour the concrete in them. And this is how they build them. They put the 6 by 6 is down in the ground about 4 feet. And that is actually part of the structure, being those poles down in the ground like that. And they just bury them. So um, are they going to rot out? Yeah, eventually they're going to rot out. Um, th this treated wood's not going to last forever. I don't like these barns that much. I wish everything was built on a stem wall. Or, or just on a mono slab, but the structure would have to be different because you wouldn't be able to rely on them poles down in the ground for the wind resistance and stuff. So uh, this is how they do it. And uh, I live in upstate New York. I'm 45 minutes north of Syracuse. Um, they build these barns like this all the time, and they're they're a lot cheaper to build them this way. You can do the framing a lot lighter because of the wind resistance of them poles being down in the ground, but I know there's better ways to do it, and I know somebody's going to say, you know, you poured concrete around the poles and all that, but th these are not forever buildings. They're not 100-year buildings. These are uh, just pole barns that are going to last, you know, maybe 30 years or something, and then they're going to have to be um, either rebuilt or something. But I just wanted to say that because somebody's going to say, you know, you shouldn't pour around the poles or whatever. Just finishing things up here, guys. Mike's hitting the edges with the bull flow. I'm taking my tool. And uh, Chris is over there pulling out that with the screed stick. I'm going to pull out to here and then we'll pull this last piece out. Curb's all filled in. And uh, we'll be ready to finish. Let it dry a little bit. That's a wrap, chaps. Had enough concrete. We had a little extra, too. Yeah. You can't get them down any farther. That is so hard under there. That's it, boys and girls. Nothing. I didn't get any video footage of finishing this off, guys. Um, I had to go up to the car wash and cut it, but we just finished up here. They stripped the boards off the and scrubbed the face of the curb and got a nice edge on it and that's a hand child finish that's what this guy wants Dwayne he uh, doesn't want it slippery he's gonna be pulling heavy equipment in here he doesn't even want us to cut it because he doesn't want um, relief cuts in it because the grease and stuff gets in the relief cuts and splatters up when he's pressure washing his floor so I told him to cut it, but he does not want to cut it. He'd rather have a hairline crack. So that's what she looks like. And that's the curb detail I wanted to show you. And that's the finish. You can see she's a little fuzzy and she's got the hand trowel because he says he's going to be driving like excavators in here and turning and, uh, you know, skidsters and all that on track. So he did not want to 
burned up finish thanks for watching the video guys okay guys i'm over at Dwayne's barn here and he actually lives here now this is his house that we did this summer with the um, stem wall the stem wall with the footer pour i'll uh, link that video to this video but his house turned out really beautiful they're living in it like i said um, that's the barn that's in the video that we poured last year i just talked to Dwayne. i want to go inside look at the floor and uh see if we can find any cracks he's probably got uh equipment in there obviously like i said he's an excavator here's all his equipment he said he, he said he did break a little chip off the front here when driving his excavator in oh yeah a little bit yeah he got a little bit into here a little not bad but he said he was covering it and then he didn't cover it didn't put his rubber mat on it yeah he busted a little bit here too yeah he wants to put an apron along here this uh coming up season but let's go inside and see what she looks like okay guys here we are inside Dwayne's shop he's got it all spray foamed all the way up through and he's he, he is heating it it's he's got a you got a waste oil furnace in here Dwayne yeah. okay yeah he's got a waste oil furnace he burns uh waste oil from all his equipment but here's that drain that we put in or he put in and usually a, a floor would crack off of these drains but there's definitely nothing going on there. And we're looking. Dwayne says he, he hasn't seen a crack in this floor. There's the curb detail. Kind of makes it nice. You can set stuff up on there. You like that curb, don't you? Yeah. 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 I don't like doing them, but... Um, it is nice for you, for you. He's got some stuff over here, obviously, but when you put all this in there, there's, you didn't see any cracks, right? There's no cracks at all. No cracks at all, he says. I don't see anything going on here, guys. We did this in September, too, last year, September 2nd. So if it was going to do something, it would have already done it. Look at her on. She is uh, not a score cut in it and not a crack in it anywhere yeah it's crazy only busted spot is where you drove on it <laughs> out there but i see the busted spot where you drove on it with your uh oh you had it in here yesterday yeah was that the big excavator yeah oh yeah if you covered it wouldn't have, wouldn't have done anything didn't even hardly scratch it. Jesus, this is good concrete right here. I just wanted to show you that, guys. So Dwayne was telling me last year he didn't heat this barn, and he had all his equipment in here. He had the mini, the bulldozer, the bigger excavator, the huge roller, and his dump truck. His his uh, ten wheeler dump truck was all in this shop, and it was not heated so that was all last winter all that weight and all that uh equipment in there unheated and then this winter obviously it's heated so i just wanted to add that to the video interesting